Hey guys, so every now and again we look at some Mopars from across the world that other people have access to, but they aren't released for the American or Canadian market. I always find it nice to broaden my learning a little bit and see what the rest of the world has to offer in terms of Mopars. So today we are checking out the new 2021 Ram 700 that was just updated for the Latin American market. It's also sold in the Middle East as well, but obviously not for other parts of North America. These are very different than our Ram full-size pickups, but I still think it's very interesting to see nonetheless. So let's get right into it. So first off, you'll notice in the video that I will use some Fiat branded photos as well, and many of you might jump in the comments section about how this truck is rebadged, and yes, that is correct. This is mechanically identical to the Fiat Strata, but ever since the 2015 model year, it has also been rebadged and redesigned by Ram trucks for various Latin American markets as the Ram 700. So earlier this October, just about a week ago actually, Ram released their second gen 700 which is a subcompact pickup truck. This second gen is on an all new platform with a 4 door double cab configuration and that's something that hasn't been done before in this subcompact segment. If you're wondering where exactly this is sold, it'll be available in 14 different areas in Latin America starting in November 2020. Bolivia, China, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, the Dominican Republic, and the Caribbean. There are three pretty familiar trim levels here, SLT, Bighorn, and Laramie. We don't know the pricing just yet, but if we use the last year's Mexican figures for the 2020 Ram 700 trims, the lowest model started at about 242,000 pesos, which is $11,000 when translated to USD. The middle level was close to 270,000 pesos, or 12,500 US dollars, and the top model was over 323,000 pesos, which would be over $15,000. The regular cab with two doors is limited to just the base SLT, while the four doors can be had on all models. Ram seems to have spent lots of time making the 700 actually look like a Ram, with a bold Ram honeycomb grille, sleek headlights, and the big Ram logo on the tailgate. Five colors will be offered, Banchisa White, Monte Carlo Red, Volcano Black, Bari Silver, and Silverstone Grey, and the top end Laramie also gets a sixth option of Alaska White. Moving inside you can find a new 7 inch Uconnect touchscreen multimedia center. Now this isn't anything particularly special for those in western markets where the 8.4 inch Uconnect has been a staple for years, but in Brazil this is one of the top systems that you can get. It's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Waze and Google Maps integration, Siri, and other standard stuff. The doors are very accommodating, opening 70 degrees up front and 80 degrees in the rear. The cabin volume has increased by 30% due to the new platform the truck rides on, which we will talk about shortly. So that means an extra 15 liters or 915 cubic inches of space inside, with tons of new storage compartments. In this subcompact segment, that means the largest interior space in its class. There's also a much improved noise cancellation when you're driving, with more sound absorbing material used. As for performance, the numbers are going to be way down from what you'd expect from a 3.6 liter V6 or a 5.7 liter V8 in North America, but of course the lower prices would reflect that. So the SLT and Bighorn have a 1.4 liter Fire Evo inline 4 cylinder engine that makes just 85 horsepower and 90 pound feet of torque. The top trim Laramie improves on that just a little bit with its 1.3 liter Firefly inline 4 with 99 horsepower and 94 pound feet of torque. Every truck gets paired with a 5 speed manual transmission with no automatic option at all and they are all front wheel drive only with no 4x4 capability. One of the major new developments is what Ram calls the Modular Pickup Platform or MPP for short which was developed exclusively for this new truck. So it helped to improve all areas of the vehicle making it more truck like with its performance and parts. There is more torsional stiffness and structural durability with more high strength steel material used in the underbody. The suspension geometry is totally redesigned with new springs, shock absorbers, a new stabilizer bar at the front, and a new rear axle. Other standard items for all versions include stability control, ramp start assistant, and advanced e-locker traction control known as TC+. So this TC+, is designed for off-road situations. By pressing that button, it electronically transfers more torque to whichever wheel has the most grip, so you can better navigate any terrain that you're traveling through. And once you do travel above 40 miles per hour or 65 kilometers per hour, 
that feature will automatically turn itself off. There's also an ABS off-road calibration that helps to lock the wheels and forms a small wedge in front of the wheel, which improves grip on unstable surfaces like snow or sand. So overall, that MPP platform will give the Ram 700 some much improved numbers. The regular cab can hold 47.8 cubic feet, or 1,354 liters of volume, and has a payload of 1,653 pounds. The double cab holds less, 29.8 cubic feet, which is 844 liters, and also has a smaller payload of 1,433 pounds. For either truck, towing capacity is not much at all, around 882 pounds. If you're looking for a comparison, believe it or not, this is actually a few hundred pounds more in terms of payload than the previous third generation Dodge Dakota from 2005 to 2011, which had a payload of around 1,330 pounds. Other numbers include a ground clearance of 8.4 inches, approach angle of 24 degrees, departure angle of 28 degrees, and a turning diameter of 35.1 feet. That MPP with the reinforced structure resulted in some great crash testing scores for the Latin American market. The double cab has four airbags standard, with pretensioners and load limiters built into the seat belts, and the seats are designed to prevent against whiplash in accidents. These trucks are built at the FCA Batim assembly plant in Brazil, along with the Fiat Strada and several other Fiat models, and the Ram Promaster Rapid. As we discussed at the beginning, it'll be available in 14 different markets, but not Canada or the US. So that's the end of this shorter video that covers the Latin American Ram 700. I think it's a very cool little truck and could have some value being used as a smaller truck or even could carry a possible Dakota nameplate for the American and Canadian markets, but that's kind of a best case scenario as the truck would need a lot of work to fit in. Right now this Ram 700 is just too compact, underpowered and less capable, plus they aren't built for US crash testing and emissions regulations, so they simply wouldn't be able to compete well at all in the competitive North American mid-sized truck segment, and that's why they currently aren't offered in the US. Something like a future Dakota would likely be based on the Jeep Gladiator instead. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and make sure to let me know what you think about the new 2021 Ram 700 down in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar, Ram, Dodge and Chrysler content and I'll see you guys in the next video.